through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 243. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Trance, mm -hmm. we're going to talk Danny Boyle, yes. uh, one of the probably most significant directors of the last two decades. Yes. I mean, Spe especially for Britain. He's, well, he's won I'm, Academy I'm just, Awards I'm just, as well. I'm just saying. He's not too shabby. I'm just he's, saying. He's worked in a lot of genres. <laughs> uh, he's worked in a lot of different genres. Yes. He's been pretty successful mm -hmm. in all of them. <laughs> yeah. um, with the exception of maybe one film, I'm a pretty big fan of his work mm -hmm. across the board. Yep. I would, I would agree with that. It's pretty solid. Uh, unfortunately, I've not seen Shallow Grave. It's on the Criterion uh, yes. release. If you want to check that out, I will be checking that out here shortly. So I'm gonna we're gonna start with the one that brought him to at least yes. my attention, maybe your attention too. I would that, say probably everyone's attention. Yeah, and that is Train Spotting, oh, the Trainspotting. story of a group of drug addicts, heroin in addicts, England. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Scotland. Scotland, thank you. Um, who <laughs> are, you know, I guess trying to make their way in the world. I kind of look at it as like a heroin version of Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, you know, they're trying to like get jobs and okay. they're trying to like survive. Okay. Okay. Uh, dealing with their lives. I would just say the failed attempts of a bu bunch of people to kick heroin. That's, that too. That's, yeah. that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, I'll go with that, sure. <laughs> I mean, obviously, this is also sort of the rise of Ewan McGregor. Mm -hmm. um, also, Ewan Bremer. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Lee Miller was also in it. Yes. I mean, great, great cast. Robert Carlyle. Yep, start uh, of um, Kelly McDonald. It's her yep. first film de debut. I mean, I, it's, it's Ir kind start of... Start of the Irvin Welsh uh, book-to-movie translation. Yes. Ooh, boy, that guy's books. And it's kind of interesting, because this is probably... I'm not going to say the first sort of comedic mm. drug movie, uh, but yeah, I see what you're saying. this is sort of like one of the first instances that I remember really experiencing comedy and hardcore addiction in yeah. the same sort of Without it trying space. to like play it up as like a funny thing. It was more just like a deep, messed up movie that had really f zany, funny moments. But I, I mean, I also... I saw this when I was probably, you know, mid-teens. I was in high school. And this is right around probably the same time it came out a few years after I saw uh, Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. And Pulp Fiction was a much more sort of bleak yes. spin on the, uh, on the use of drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an OD in that movie. Yes. And so to sort of just a few years later see sort of a lighter side of it is kind of... <laughs> I love that you consider train spotting a lighter side when there's a dead baby in it. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not a light movie, but even just to have comedy and like a dead baby in the same yeah, space yeah. is kind of a pretty pro <laughs> prolific thing. I yes. think that speaks to Danny Boyle as a director mm -hmm. in that he's able to sort of navigate that and have there be comedy because mm -hmm. otherwise it seems like that could be one of those subjects that instantly would just just get curtail. too dark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's one of those movies that I remember watching so much uh, as a younger person and having such a hard time understanding the accents. Mm -hmm. I remember it took many, many watch, uh, watches and then re reading the book. The book is actually all done in the Cockney like dialogue as well, all very, very uh, hard to understand. Uh, in fact, it was so incomprehensible to American audiences that the first 20 minutes of the film were tw uh, redubbed to make the Scottish accents more intelligible and able to be understood so, by American yeah, audiences. Is, I mean, there we it's, talk about authenticity. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I mean, it's I think a huge part of it is that the cast is just so charming. Yes. Like, I mean, obviously, you and McGregor instantly popped. Mm -hmm. Johnny M Lee Miller went on to do like hackers mm -hmm. and stuff. Mary right Angelina Jolie for us. Very briefly, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, th I think it's really per like important. Plus, the material that was written was so. The ad adaption, as you spoke of, yeah. was really well done. I mean, John Hodge was nominated for an Academy yeah. Award for that. Uh, it won the BAFTA Award for Scotland. Uh, mm -hmm. Best feature film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's it won Best Actor for Ewan McGregor. Uh, Robert Carlyle was nominated for Best Actor. Uh, Begbie. Kelly McDonald was nominated for Best Actress. Like <laughs> it's just a very, very well received film. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one that they've long uh, pushed for a sequel. Yeah, because there's I, a sequel book called Porno. And which I I've think. Read. They're just finally going to get mm -hmm. it done here in the near future. It's a little harder to do because the the second book is the main the the, the closest thing you have to main character is Sick Boy Johnny Lee Miller's character mm. from the first movie. It's like ten years after 
and it's mostly around him. And some of the other characters come back. Uh, Brenton, Ewan McGregor's character, comes back briefly, but it's mostly about Johnny Lee Miller attempting to make a pornographic film. So I, I mean, I have to I, maybe the. I mean, Johnny Lee Miller is relatively popular. I mean, he's been on was it uh, Elementary? Elementary. So he's got that going for him. Maybe they'll have him as the lead. I can't imagine it without amping up the Ewan McGregor role. Like yeah. I feel like they'll probably rewrite it. I mean, so he's that st- he's still part. definitely like a part of it, but he's very clearly not the main character. He's definitely a supporting character. I feel, I feel like that would be one roadblock to potentially getting funding. I think that, which is probably the hardest thing that's been causing it to make the sequel in the first place yeah. is it's a hard sell to not take your most charismatic main character and go with it. Yes. I also think it's interesting for that for the close-up shots of um, of the heroin injection, the makeup department constructed an entire prosthetic arm mm-hmm. uh, complete with pulsing veins, smack tracks, and small pockets of blood that were appear when the skin was purchased, punctured by a hypodermic needle. Wow. So that like, went really... Which is, I mean, I think that starts to be a vein in Danny Boyle's filmmaking, that he takes those extra steps to make specific things seem extra real or extra gritty or personal. He does go above and beyond the Call of Duty. Yes. Uh, Let's move forward, though. Uh, Just a year later, uh, also starring Ewan McGregor, Mm -hmm. we had A Life Less Ordinary. This is sort of his introduction, I guess, to America, you would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is his first American-based production. You know, you had Cameron Diaz, Mm -hmm. you had Holly Holly Hunter, Hunter, Delroy Lindo. Oh, Delroy. um, About a... um, I forget, does this have Christopher Walken? No, who plays the bad guy in this? uh, Dan Dan, Hayden. Dan Hayden. Okay, yeah. Um, About, what's it... um, Two angels who are in charge of a human relationships on Earth and offer uh, unsolicited help to bring an unlikely couple together. <laughs> yes, and they bring them together by kidnapping. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously there are other sort of like um, similar sort of concepts. You know, Vim Vendors worked mm-hmm. in one. Um, there's City of Angels, which yes. is a rem- remake of Vim Vendors film. Um, but, you know... It's. I really like the sort of concept of um, like guardian angels. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's a really interesting Especially idea. With Delroy Lindo and Holly Hunter, is, they're great. They're very quirky and strange characters. This whole movie is pretty quirky and strange. You I know, will say it's definitely on that that edge of the '90s film. <laughs> I think it was kind of a big thing in the '90s. I mean, as I said, you know, there was Cameron Diaz was. This was around the time she was, she really was popping. Yes. I mean, you had Mask, the Mask, this, and then something about Mary in yeah. a short span of time. But I mean, you had City of Angels, mm-hmm. which is about you know angels. You yes. had Michael, the yes. John Travolta That's one true. about yes. sort of like an archangel mm-hmm. coming to Earth. I mean, so there was definitely something in the '90s yes. about you know. The relationship, I guess, between angels mm-hmm. and humans. I mean, the end of days was another sort yeah, of one. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Stigmata. There, there's yeah, a lot of those. There's a very, it was just a very, like, <laughs> sort of, like... I mean, probably had to deal with, like, the year 2000 or probably. something coming, you know, yeah. the second coming, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, Mental, cultural... Uh, thoughts at the time, yeah. people's worries. But concerned. I personally, I, I like the idea of sort of the guardian angels. Mm-hmm. Particularly, I think they'd probably be quirky, realistically. Yeah. I would like, I mean, if there is a heaven, mm-hmm. um, I would imagine that people would be pretty much the same there as they are mm-hmm. on Earth. Mm-hmm. And so if you were tasked with being a guardian angel, you'd probably be much like you were That's the as hope. a human. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I, it feels somewhat natural. And, I, you know, I think Cameron Diaz and Ewan McGregor are kind of an interesting couple. Yeah, I mean, they, they, their chemistry is interesting in the film, I would say. I mean, you know, the fact that he's kidnapping her kind of makes one of those Stockholm right. syndrome love stories, but... Uh, it's kind of a unique way to spin a love story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, not very common. <laughs> no, no. Uh, same writer as uh, as John Hodge. Tron Spot, Train Spotting. Yeah. Yep. So you got John Hodge and Danny Boyle working together. I, I, I mean... I, there is definitely s- sort of a roughness, though, about Ewan McGregor during mm-hmm. these periods where he, I mean, he was very charming, mm-hmm. but he definitely does not feel like as skilled an actor as he has yes. since gone on. You know, yes. I feel like you look at him and say, like, um, episode one, Phantom Menace. Versus like here, and that's mm-hmm. probably I don't know, like three years, four probably, years yeah, apart. Maybe like, and yeah. he feels like somebody who really. Figured himself out. Yeah, I would say that. you can see him growing as an actor during all these films. Yeah, he definitely hit that like a uh, big blockbuster caliber, and I think he amped it up with his acting skill very quickly. I mean, it's interesting to think about a guy who went from you know train spotting in the mid '90s to 
Phantom Menace mm -hmm. in like half a decade. Yeah. Like it's pretty, it's a pretty bold move by Lucas to cast him in that role. Yeah. Gotta give him credit for that. But he won. I mean, he won the Empire Award for Best British Actor here too. Hmm. Uh, you know, unfortunately this film seems to have uh, largely been overlooked by a lot of people, I'll say. It faded away in yeah. the annals of time. <laughs> but like, man, I remember seeing the trailer for this mm -hmm. before it came out, and the trailer so resonated with me. Oh, I remember, lo I I think I probably owned this movie in the early 2000s, and what, I mean, it was one of those movies that I remember watching all the time. Like, it was up there in my, you know, recent, fun, favorite-ish movies. Unlike the next film. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you talk about Ewan McGregor's rise to stardom. Mm -hmm. Danny Boyle very much was on a similar sort of track. And, yes. you know, just a few years later, he did The Beach, mm -hmm. which stars Leonardo DiCaprio, who was yes. b big time. This is post-Titanic. Yep. I mean, Interestingly, not Danny Boyle's choice. He actually wanted, not surprisingly, after the first two films we talked about, Ewan McGregor, Ewan McGregor to yeah. play the role of Richard, but the studio wanted Leonardo DiCaprio because he was blowing up with Titanic and, and Le Romeo plus Juliet. And so they cast him before Boyle could intervene. Hmm. And I guess while McGregor blames the studio, he has reportedly not spoken to Boyle since, which is sad because they had such a seemingly strong career in the beginning of their... I mean, that's interesting. I think they, that can't possibly be true, given that the prospect of Trainspotting 2 is out there. Yeah. Um, they probably made up at some that's point. That's the hope. I'm pretty sure they have. But, you know, the story about a guy who travels to Thailand, mm -hmm. finds a strange map, and then, you know, sort of joins this colony on this beach mm -hmm. who kind of has this uh, relationship with these drug dealers mm -hmm. on the kind same island. Kind of shady island. interactions. Yeah, and then sort of things fall apart, if yes. you will. Yes. Um, brings back Robert Carra mm -hmm. uh, in sort mm -hmm. of a funny, interesting role. You know, I really <laughs> like the first half of this movie. Like I, like, I can agree with that. I like it when he goes to Thailand. Mm -hmm. I like it when he sort of meets uh, Robert Carlyle's yes. character. He goes and he meets the little the community. Mm -hmm. I, I like as he's sort of getting integrated in the community. And Leonardo DiCaprio, very skilled actor. Yep. I mean, it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. But there's a point that it sort of changes um, <laughs> when they became aware of, like, the drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're, they it, kind of ramp up the action element, yes. as it were. But specifically, the moment that it turns for me <laughs> is when Leonardo DiCaprio is, like, so disoriented that mm -hmm. he's imagining his life as a video game. Yep. And that was the point I was like, what the the fuck because it's <laughs> it, it becomes just too much at that point yeah like it's it's so there's a reason people don't do first person shooter type elements in movies well or at all it, i mean it, that was so cheesy but like the story really just takes this sort of like um i don't know how to describe it like a kind of um just over like, over the top sort of turn and it becomes just like psychotic. too much yeah, yeah, okay, psychotic, that's fair. Which is kind of shocking, because you have Danny Boyle directing it, mm -hmm. and you have John Hodge back again yeah. as one of the writers. third time. I mean, it's just, I don't I don't really understand where things necessarily went off the rails. Yeah, I kind of wonder how much of that might have been, I mean, not the Leonardo DiCaprio element, but the idea of Danny Boyle not necessarily wanting Leonardo DiCaprio. I can't imagine when you have your first two pet projects that have made it, well, not your first two, but these two pet projects that have made it big, you've got the same actor going through, you've got a lot of faith, and you want him to carry over to the next one, and you can't. I don't know, maybe it pulled some steam out of him, maybe he just didn't, wasn't feeling it. I don't know, I think this has been kind of a divisive film, and I'll, I'll sort of give you a perspective. Danny Boyle was nominated for the Golden Bear, Berlin Bear Award, at the Berlin Film Festival. Okay. And yet at the same time, Leonardo DiCaprio was nominated for Razzie for mm, Worst Actor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, the cinematography is so gorgeous yeah. in this film. It's got a lot of talented actors mm -hmm. involved. I feel like the problem for me is it didn't really know what it wanted the film yeah. to be. And it just sort of keeps changing what it is. You know, first it's sort of this... I would agree um, with that. ...adventure kind of story. And then it, it becomes go. a sort of like action mm -hmm, film mm -hmm. and then it's sort of like this um thriller yeah. and like it just it keeps morphing what it is and it never really feels cohesive yeah, to me it kind of feels like when it changes each time it leaves behind what it had done before rather than carrying it on yeah. so it kind of 
it's muddles just, a little bit. Yeah, and unfortunately. It's, I mean, it's, it's just unfortunate because there are a lot of things I like about it, but... I know, and it's really like one of the only dings in this dude's rather long and illustrious totally. career. Like, pretty much, I, 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 besides that, I really, I'm pretty much completely mm -hmm. on board with what he's done. And he's done some adventurous stuff mm -hmm. that I think, you know, very easily could be considered mistakes yes. otherwise. Moving right along, though, he bounces back in a big, bad way with 28 Days Later. Yes. Starring Killian Murphy. Mm -hmm. The zombie film. Uh, I don't know. Not zombie. They're, it, it, they're people it, infected with the rage virus. Yeah, which is modeled after Ebola. Right. So it's much more disease-based than eating brains. Right. But, you know, it's not true zombies. They yes. never call them zombies. Yes. But this is sort of one of the uh, originators, as we spoke of, mm -hmm. with the fast zombie yes. style. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Killian Murphy, much sort of like Ewan McGregor before him, very much an up-and-coming actor at mm -hmm. that point. And this blew him up mm -hmm. big time. He went on to do uh, a lot after this. And also sort of became a muse of Danny Boyle's yep. and becoming a recurring Not person Not surprisingly, in guess who originally they wanted to play the role? You and McGregor. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> role was offered to Ryan Gosling after that, but he had a scheduling conflict. And speaking of sort of a transition, mm -hmm. uh, Beach was co-written by John Hodge yes. and Alex Garland mm -hmm. 28 Days Later. Solely Alex Garland. So mm -hmm. there's, I guess, a changing of the guard there, yep. too. I don't know if there was a problem with John Hodge. I don't Maybe know. Maybe John Hodge just was just tired of doing it. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe he just needed some fresh blood. Whatever. But, you know... Uh, Very interesting visual movie. They did a lot of, like, digital shots it, for most of the it stuff. It felt... I'm not going to say, like, handy cam, but yeah. it felt much more sort of... Um, Low budget feels like a, a an unfair a ding, classification. But yeah. I would but say it, maybe a um, guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah, or felt much more. Yeah, yeah m felt much more guerrilla, and I feel like that sort of helped the fear of it because it yes. felt much more like you were in the middle of the experience. And, and that also allowed them to have a lot of opportunities to film in London places and basically to vacate them uh, because yeah. they they said that the amount of time it took them to set up and break down their digital setup was. Completely would have been impossible with standard 35 millimeter setups. So they could close off a street for like, you know, two hours and get a ton of shots in there when they might not even be set up normally. Stuff like that. They had a lot of interesting stuff like that. All the flashback scenes were shot in Super 8 to give it a different feel. There's a lot. Of he's interesting a very visual. interesting director. He's definitely a very thoughtful filmmaker in that yes. regard. And, you know, he's such a good guy at putting casts together. I mean, even beyond mm -hmm. Killian Murphy, you have, like, uh, Naomi Harris, who's wonderful. Last scene is, what's it, um, Money, Penny, and yes. Skyfall. That's right. Uh, so she's done pretty well for herself. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. You know, Ninth freaking, Doctor. Yeah. Can't go wrong with him. So, he, I mean, very... Destro from G.H. Show Rise of Cobra. Yeah, that's, that was a movie. It, <laughs> it was, was a movie. It, it was a film that came out. But, it uh, made money enough to make a sequel. Uh, film won, like, <laughs> an Empire Award for Best Film. Mm -hmm. And Killian Murphy was nominated for Best Newcomer. Yeah. So it's definitely, definitely garnering <laughs> a lot of attention for a film. And, and I just think it's funny because you're talking about all these, like... We're talking about all these, like fast setups and they're moving and they're going in London they're making a zombie movie uh, the exe execution pit scene near the end of the film was uh, actually filmed outside of a church uh, and off Wither Witherington Road connecting Salisbury to Downton one of the props teams didn't pick up the fake bodies after filming you probably can see where Whoa. this goes a local hairdresser from Downton saw them from the road panicked crashed her car and phoned the police who came and investigate and interrogate the crew <laughs> that's the Down Abbey I'd like to see. <laughs> that's how that's how the actual zombie box is going to happen. Somebody's going to see a zombie prop. They're going to start hoarding and shooting people in the head. Here's the funny thing about this. <laughs> and I don't know when The Walking Dead began. Oh, the when the comic began? Yeah. But the start of this movie so much reminds me of the start oh, of yeah. Walking Dead where, you know, Killian I, Murphy wakes up and is wandering through the city. Yeah, I and he actually, wakes up in the hospital, is walking through the city. I want to say that it was that they were very close in time. I think when we talked zombies, I looked it up. And I want to say, like, maybe The Walking Dead had come out, but uh, Danny Boyle hadn't seen it or something like that. I'm where, sure. like, they I'm were sure very, I think they were like six months to a year apart when they came out. Very, very close in time. Yeah, I, I'm sure Danny Boyle was not ripping off. No, the but really dead. interesting is one of those weird things. This is like, I mean, I guess, not a bad idea. To... I mean, I guess it's one of those things though. If you're gonna wake up with no memory of where you are, it's, it's gotta probably be in a hospital setting. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine you just laying in some ditch for like three weeks, <laughs> yeah. not like, getting eaten or not killed, getting or, eaten, yeah. not being found by a zombie. Yeah, if like, there's anywhere you're gonna survive long, it's probably gonna be in a hospital. Yeah, so. <laughs> 
That being said, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to move very long. Skip uh, Millions, which was an interesting film of mm-hmm. his. I kind of, um, I don't know if you want to call it like almost like a fable, but you know, a youngster mm-hmm. finds some money, gets involved with some criminals, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Interesting Still film. Still haven't seen that one. Yeah. But again, you know, jumping between all sorts of genres, mm-hmm. he then goes forward and does Sunshine, Sunshine. Yes. again with Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. uh, which is about a team of astronauts sent to reignite the dying sun 50 years into the future. Mm-hmm. So, sci-fi thriller. Yeah. Clearly what Danny Boyle's past history <laughs> speaks to him doing. Interestingly enough, it, uh, this th- this is this film, I think, gets a lot of um, retroactive hate from a lot of people. I think mm. a lot of times I talk to people and they seem to basically not like the third act of the film and it, they felt like it, it maybe in the same way that we yeah. didn't like the beach where it was just a yeah, change could, up I mean, at the there, end it, it, it is a little bit of a change it, it, it is I still enjoy the movie one of the things <laughs> that amazed me about this movie is this kind of seemed like a film idea that much like Armageddon or Deep Impact or any spacey movie would have been like just brutally ripped apart by science nerds yeah but interestingly enough, Dr. Brian Cox of Kern and uh, Manchester University, very famous worldwide scientist, was the film science advisor. It sounds appropriate for Danny Boyle. As mm-hmm. I said, he's very much paying attention to yes. details. And, and he's very Killing cute. Murphy spent a lot of time with Brian Cox talking, learning, working about stuff. Again, you know, it doesn't hurt that he has a, an incredible cast as oh, yeah. I mean, you got Killian Murphy as mm-hmm. lead, Rose Byrne. Yeah. I mean, this is... This is Rose Byrne, probably pre-damages. Yeah, so she definitely. is still, you know, on mm-hmm. her rise as well, yep. and she's become one of the pre-first class, pre-bridesmaids. Um, yeah, I mean, she's <laughs> she has become one of the, I mean, most talented actresses. Yeah, she's of really probably the up. last half decade. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you even think of her in smaller roles like um, Get Him to the Greek. Yes, oh, she's she she's, great she's in that. she does comedy and drama so mm-hmm. well. So she's become so versatile. Yes, and uh, you know, to get her so early on, you got you know Chris Evans. Yeah, man, who, early Chris Evans. I mean, he's still he was known at this point. Yeah, I mean, but he was known not necessarily for the best, better stuff. This was right. like Fantastic Four era. And this, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, he's <laughs> but he, I mean, even still, like he's a very talented yes. actor in the right hands. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, Michelle Yeoh. I'm yeah. a big fan of Michelle Yeoh. She's yeah. a very talented actress. And again, bringing back Alex Car- Garland, mm-hmm. um, because... <laughs> Apparently, you know, when he finds somebody he likes to collaborate, yes, it's very, he very much sticks with them, and that's true from his later films as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see, like, you know, A. R. Rahman uh, being used as a composer multiple mm-hmm. times and stuff like that. So it very much. I, I also think it's interesting because you know we talk about Danny Boyle bounced around a lot for genres. He found working on a sci-fi project so exhausting that he vowed to never make another one after this film. It we'll was see. Probably really, I don't know. Really he, he's one of those guys that's so like uh, inspiration driven that I feel mm. like if he gets the right material, he would not that's, roll anything that's out. That's definitely. And it's true. funny to even think about the backlash it gets because even still, it was nominated for like an Empire Empire Award for both <laughs> best film and best sci-fi fantasy film. Wow. So I mean, it's it's definitely gotten its fair share of support best uh science fiction film was nominated at the saturn awards all sorts of stuff like that so it's i mean it's it's a great film i think i saw this film in theater to be honest it's it's probably not his most well-known film it's probably not his best film no but it's one of his most unique films yes and it's it's it is very well done for Mm -hmm. what it is i mean you it it, it's not i i'm not i I, unlike the beach, like I don't flip out over this yes. one. It's I, I think he maybe learned from his mistakes a little Probably, bit with the yeah. beach, but at the same time, like it might not be everyone's taste, but I still I still find it entertaining. Yeah, it's, I think it's a, I think it's cool. like some of the lesser Nolan works where you yeah. maybe forget that he's done some of these other yeah, interesting I'd projects say. because you're thinking about Inception and Dark Knight. It's, I mean, it's probably <laughs> fair, and it's kind of interesting to think that just. After this film, he went on to do Slumdog Millionaire, yeah. the film where he won Best Picture, Best Director, all that sort of stuff. Yep. As of 2010, uh, Slumdog Millionaire and Schindler's List are the only films to win Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay at the Golden Globes, BAFTAs, and the Oscars. That's a lot. That's nine awards. I wonder if the reaction to... Um, Sunshine mm. was part of the reason that he moved on from working with Alex Garland. Because he went on, and ever since, I think he's been working with Simon Bufoy. Hmm. Uh, Bufoy Interesting. Um, who got, you know, Maybe it was like the at, beach problem where he's like, sorry, uh, I gotta get rid of you. What's the John case? Hodge. Yeah, John yeah. Hodge, sorry, Maybe. we can't we can't do it anymore. I mean, Slumdog Millionaire, a story about a, uh, a Mumbai teen who... Mm-hmm 
competes and wins on the um, Indian version yes. of Who Wants, Wants to, to Be a Millionaire. Millionaire and sort of the disbelief that this slum dog could possibly mm-hmm. be smart enough to win. And he sort of relays the story of how he learned the answers to yes. the questions that just happen to be it's, asked. It's one of those neat coincidental stories where yeah. every question has a, he specifically had some crazy thing happen in his life that that's had to traumatic that he couldn't forget about the answer because of it. I mean, it's it's such a, a interesting and beautiful story. Obviously, mm-hmm. starring Dev Patel yes. and Frida Pinto as mm-hmm. sort of I don't know if you want to call them star-crossed lovers, but they're they're slum dog yeah, individuals <laughs> who. Uh, fall in love as youths, mm-hmm. have their paths crossed throughout their lives, even though, you know, they have different circumstances, yes. like she gets involved with some sketchy individuals, mm-hmm. he sort of has to struggle to survive, mm-hmm. but, you know... And they kind of end up twining back together at the end of the film. Yeah, I mean, it's real interesting. You got, was it, Anil Kapoor, Kapoor as the host of the mm-hmm. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, um... Went on to do like um, Mission Impossible, Ghost That's right, Protocol, yes. but I mean, um, it's interesting that he actually involved people like him, or I believe heavily in the Bollywood community, yes, and yes. as part of the film. He, you know, even has a Bollywood with dance sequence. And, yeah, I mean, it's such, it's such a perfect blend of sort of flashbacks and present day yeah. storytelling that make it so interesting. Plus, you know, was it A.R. Rahman who did the music? Was mm. so so talented um you can understand why he won my i mean summon bofoy won best step screenplay mm-hmm. won best cinematography best editing Jeez. uh best original score best original song jive ho just sweet jive ho um it did it yeah sound mixing what did it not win well, it lost <laughs> original song as well oh, darn. to itself lost sound editing but yeah pretty much won everything else so um I, I think it's also neat that uh, Danny Boyle placed the money to be paid to the three uh, lead child actors playing all the three main characters mm-hmm. when they're young um, in a trust that was to be released to them upon the completion of grade school at 16 years of age. But not to be stop- to be stopping there and just saying, hey, here's a trust that you'll get eventually. The production company set up an auto rickshaw driver to take the kids to school every day until they're 16. So, like, it's not just like, hey, you're going to get some money eventually. It's like, we're investing the fact that you three kids deserve to have the advantage to... I, I hope I hope they get out of it well. I mean, you think about American child actors getting dicked over. Like, it's <laughs> sort of like, hopefully they get out of it in one true. piece. Yeah. I <laughs> um, also want to give a shout-out to the casting of Irfan Khan mm. as the police inspector who went on to act as... Um, What's his name in uh, Life of Pi? He oh, was yes. the adult version of Pi. Mm-hmm. So very, very talented guy. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, one of his things that Danny Boyle almost always does is have amazing casts. Yes. And this is just yet another example. And you know, in the same way that like now a lot of the big superhero movies or big blockbusters are trying to appeal to Chinese marketers because the Chinese film market is so big and and you know profitable uh this is uh, it, it's the same thing with bollywood it's never a bad idea to try to link hollywood and bollywood together there's such a huge crowd in india that yeah. you can make a lot of money off Second of the smallest biggest connection. country billion yeah. people but yeah i mean it won't made 300 400 million dollars so it's clear a success i mean it's just it's probably one of the tightest movies he's made, if yeah. you ask me, in terms of just like I can see the that. balance of the plot throughout mm-hmm. and the unfolding of the and story. The appeal, overall appeal, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the widest crowd pleaser, <laughs> yeah. sure. But especially considering the next one he did. Yes. 127 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, story of, what's it, um, Aaron Rolston. Yes. Who, Getting his arm stuck in a rock in yeah. the middle of uh, is it Arizona? Mo- I forget. Moab, Utah. Utah, that's right. Um, Fucking Utah. It, again, you know. Involving uh, Simon Beaufoy mm-hmm. as the writer based upon the book of Aaron Ralston. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably, again, it's a very, very well done movie. Mm-hmm. Much more sort of... Visceral, I, maybe? Well, it's, it's definitely mm-hmm. probably the most visceral reaction. I mean, he's, I mean between, uh, you know, train spotting yes. and possibly like <laughs> 20 days, days later, later yeah. the reaction to this one <laughs> is so much stronger, probably because it's the most real. Yeah. Because it was real life. Yeah. As uh, we talked about a little when we did uh, James Franco. Exactly. But also, I mean, um, 
I would say this is probably one of the more challenging films he has. Yeah. I would say this is a film... I feel like this film only succeeds because of its editing. I feel like hmm. I feel like even the way the film is set up, that it would have been very easy to get bogged down or bored or seem stale. But something about the Dan- Danny Boyle's editing from the beginning intro all the way through the movie just keeps what would seem like a long, arduous pace very tight and hmm. very quick moving, I feel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could see that. I think, personally, I think, for me, the thing that really was the reason why it succeeded was the relationship between Danny Boyle and James Franco. Mm. Like, Danny Boyle and James Franco really both were hyper-conscious of... Making it legit. Yeah, I mean, Aaron Ralston was very concerned about Mm -hmm. giving... In fact, he thought it could only be done as a documentary. And so to have Danny Boyle really invest as much trouble as he could in making it authentic yes. is really important. Uh, you know, like having James Franco struggle to mm-hmm. get his arm from out huh. underneath the rock when he he didn't know, Danny Boyle didn't tell him that he could not. It was impossible for him <laughs> to get him out. So he actually physically struggled mm-hmm. for like 20 minutes thinking yep. he might be able to just, do it. Then they just filmed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I will say probably the reason why it's the most challenging is A, because it's so visceral for me. Like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to watch it again. I agree. Yeah. Because it's so brutal watching mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron's story unfold, but also I think it's a one-man show. The, too. Yeah, hard well, about that's true. that. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, it worked for Castaway, so you know it's possible. Yeah. Um, but the editing is really interesting and unique, and I think it could be a turnoff to some people hmm. because it is is a very sort of stylized yeah. version of the story. I mean, there's a lot of like. Um, Delu- I, I, I guess you would call him delusions because yeah. he's like dehydrated yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Like there's a kind lot of hallucinations. Of, yeah, from hallucinations his yeah. of like things that are occurring. You know, mm-hmm. things with his family, yes. things with uh, like the experience of hiking here, yeah. and stuff like that. Like it, it feels like it very easily could be like um, drifting too far mm. from the core story because of that. But I think. James Franco and Danny Boyle do enough to keep it anchored that hmm. it makes it interesting I can and, see that. and tough. Like I think that's the core to me. It's funny that you know you talk about Jamie, James Franco and Danny Boyle getting along because I'm going to give you you get exactly one guess who was originally going to play it, not James Franco. Killian Murphy. Dang right. Yeah. <laughs> Again, keeping with that idea of. Well, uh, I mean, he D- Danny Boyle is very much a guy who. I don't know if you want to say it's like works from a comfort zone or mm. works with like you know muses yeah. or something like that. Like it's the same as like you know Christopher Nolan like yeah. working with. I feel like he uh, finds like um, a channel. Like he finds these actors that he can channel his stories through, or people that he can his ideas can get transmitted in a way closest to me perhaps, how he feels. Perhaps it's that, but I mean it's much like you think about Christopher Nolan working with like you know Leonardo mm-hmm. DiCaprio on a bunch of films. Christopher. Christian Bale on a bunch mm-hmm. of them. I feel like there's just something like you develop maybe a shorthand yeah, where with people and you know when you feel comfortable working with them you just you you are able to communicate those ideas it's true. easier and I mean may, I don't know maybe there's something about like Killian Murphy and Ian McGregor pulling out of those projects that then left a bad taste in his mouth mm. so he doesn't use them again going forward yeah. but maybe maybe they will resolve the problems maybe he's just it. moved on with them and it's not you know a personal thing yeah no it's cool I also think it's just uh, rather appropriate that to make James Franco portraying of Aaron Ralston as accurate as possible the real Ralston told director Danny Boyle to have James Franco recite lyrics from the jam band Fish <laughs> his favorite nice. band to uh, get him into character because it was Ralston's favorite band so he had Franco recite lyrics from the band just to get his head space in the right area. I think, again, it speaks to how talented of a director Danny Boyle is. Yes. That, I mean, I think it's a very short list of people who, A, as an actor, and B, as a director, could create a film that is really one person throughout the entire movie. I mean, you know, Robert Zemeckis with uh, Tom Hanks Uh being the other one, but I I think it's a very short list of people who could actually (laughs) achieve that and and have have it be a compelling movie. Yeah, it would be so compelling, so good, and as you said, so, so... almost traumatic because of how personal it is that I I agree I would probably never watch the movie again or I would watch like the up to you know almost the end and then I would just be like it's cool I don't need to watch that part I'll just fast forward a little bit okay cool (laughs) then look the ending yay yeah totally yeah Uh, shout out to Lizzie Kaplan though ever so brief playing the sister Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm 
Moving right along, we're going to bring it to this Friday, April yes. 5th, the release of Trance. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's a limited release to begin with. I think so, um, yes. Story of an art auctioneer who becomes mixed up with a group of criminals mm -hmm. and partners with a hypnotherapist in order to recover a lost painting. Yes, James McAvoy playing the uh, main character, Rosaria Dawson, the, th the hypnotherapist. therapist, hypnotherapist. And uh, Frank Castle, and Vincent, Vincent Castle mm. in it, <laughs> Punisher. <laughs> yeah. uh, Not Frank Castle, Vincent Castle. Yeah. <laughs> awesome French actor, Brotherhood of the Wolf and Lane represent. Black Swan. Well, yeah. He's done a but lot. But I like his, he's a, he's I been like in his I think his stuff. French movies a little yeah. bit more than his American yeah. work. Uh, very talented guy. Yes. I mean, it looks like a really twisted movie. I saw the Red Band trailer yeah. for it probably first, and there's a lot of uh, playing with reality because the hypnotherapist element um, with James McAvoy, who I love. I, I think James McAvoy has just been killing it in these last few years. He's been pretty amazing the last few years. His choices, I mean, even Day Mac, I think the first one that really turned it for me was actually Wanted. Yeah. Which I had really low expectations Same for. Here. And it, it really pleasantly blew yeah, me Yeah, and he was probably one of the better parts of it. He's very, ever, very charismatic. Ever since then, he's, I mean, and he's jumped much like Boyle between all sorts of dramas. Mm -hmm. you know, period pieces. Last King of Scotland, X Men First Class. Extra Adventures. Yeah, all dude, sorts it's of all stuff. over the yeah, place. He's, he's a really talented guy. And, you know, R Rosario Dawson's probably an underrated. Yeah, she uh, hasn't done a lot. Probably. I mean, I'm trying to think, like, you know, what that bad train movie with uh, Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. and then probably what the run. Down. It's probably uh, and Clerks too. It's like probably almost it. Uh, it's better they, than Men in Black. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's, uh, we're sorry, yeah. Dawson. I'm sorry. Yeah, pour one out um, for you yeah. for that one. But you know, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's definitely interesting. It's very interesting to think that this is sort of coming full circle. Mm-hmm. Who the writer of this was? Oh, ooh, John Hodges. John Hodge. Yep. Yep. Coming full or circle. John Hodge. Not with John Hodges. Joe Aaron. Um, Arnie. Ar mm. Arnie. Um, see if he's. Working with him going forward makes nice. me wonder what happened with Simon Beaufoy. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's a really interesting uh, looking film. It definitely, it's a very straightforward premise, it yes. seems like. That's going to go real funky in the head, I yeah, think. <laughs> I, I mean, it's named Trance, after yeah. all, so you got to imagine it's going to be interesting. I, I, I can't help but think that Danny Boyle is going to do something interesting with what could otherwise be a very straightforward yeah. plot. Yeah. So I there's very much a, there's a scene in the Red Band trailer that makes me want to see the film all by itself. Yeah. Just, just Trailer is yeah. interesting. Poster is yeah. interesting. Uh -huh. I, just, I think it looks like... It and, and it's like, you know, when you give Danny Boyle a concept that seems rather simple on paper, that usually is when he does some of the most interesting stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, he's going to make a zombie movie. But <laughs> look what he, he made. Yeah. Heroin addicts. Yeah. Look what he made. Come on. <laughs> Don't dance. Don't doubt Danny Boyle. Yeah, don't doubt Danny. The three Ds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned. Um, anyway, no, let us know your thoughts about that mm -hmm. movie and join us next time for our DVD rundown for the week of April 9th. Mm -hmm. As always, we're on MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number. 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. Yes, we we're are. on blip.tv. Mm. Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Leave us some reviews on iTunes. Bug us on YouTubes. Give us the subscriptions and the, the downvotes. And the chats. Right? And the upvotes. That, I mean, the, up, some, the, the up thumbs. We want yeah, some thumbs yeah, up. up. We thumbs. don't want... Don't tell me it was on now. No, 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 no. Don't listen to me. Yeah. Don't listen to me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.